I want to make a, a note about the ribbon cable in this. Um, every video, every other video I've seen has a, a connector for the ribbon cable for the CD assembly. It has a release mechanism where it's a little white collar that pops up and then you can remove this easily. Well, this isn't that way. And the one important, most important thing I want to, because I've already encountered this problem, is that when you go to remove this, inserting it is easy, removing it is a little more difficult. When you go to remove it, you need to get your hands on both sides and wiggle it out. If you pull too far up on one side, it doesn't, I mean, <clears throat> we're talking about millimeters, it will get hung up on the opposite side that's still in there, and then it's really hard to get out. And then perhaps if that does happen, I recommend pushing it back in and starting over again. But it comes out fairly easily if you can just manage to go slight millimeters at a time and just wiggle it out that way. If you go too far, it'll get stuck. Okay, so I got the drive out <coughs> and the cover taken off. And um, <laughs> we seem to have a modification to this port. And, you know, it's an, it's an old school modification. Um, I can't seem to find anything online about it, but somebody has modified this CD32 drive unit, and I really, I would really like to find out what this modification does or is for, because, you know, can I reverse it easily? <clears throat> Were there components removed to make this happen? This is just the worst case scenario. You have a modded uh, device that you're trying to diagnose. Is it the mod? Is it something else? What's making the disc not spin up? I guess if I don't find any more information about this, I'm going to leave it in place and I will uh, try to just get the drive to spin up because it's not spinning up at all and I'd like to know why that is. So I did look up this IC. Um, it is a 4W66F and it turns out it's an SPST dual switch so single pull single throw but it's got two switches in it schematics of this CD PCB do not exist as far as I know uh, you'll you can do what I do you can try to look up on the internet you can try to google it you can try to check all of the repositories of schematics and I guarantee you well if you do find it that'd be great go ahead and share it with me please share me the link in the comments but as far as I know it doesn't exist this is essentially uh, this chip on here is essentially a relay let me bring that up two independent circuits of bi-directional switches so it's a, it's a bilateral switch but really you know it's a it's a it's a double relay on a chip. It just probably uses uh, transistors inside to, to switch. But you have a, a voltage source, and then you have a ground, and then you have a control circuit one and a control circuit two. Control circuit one <coughs> switches. Uh, <coughs> basically, if you apply voltage onto this of five volts, um, it will create very low impedance between <clears throat> pins one and two and the same thing here if you are, if you apply five volts to uh, control a uh, pin two it will create a very low resistance between these two so uh, what I also discovered is I may not have a schematic for this but I, I know what the pinout of this is based upon <clears throat> the pinout that's on the motherboard this green wire is the control uh, and it's actually wired together it's actually wired together so uh, I tested continuity on it, and pin seven, uh, control one, and and pin t and pin three, control two, they're actually wired together in the board. And then there's a green wire that comes, you know, basically from the both of the control circuits, control signal, to pin 26. Now pin 26 is the door opening sensor. So when the door is open, it puts out zero volts. 
and when the door is closed, it puts out roughly 5 volts to pin 26. So 5 volts is being uh, sent to the CD unit, CD PCB, and it's being picked up and brought over to here. And so what's happening then, get something to point with, is this red and black wire uh, are technically shorted when voltage is applied. Normally they're open, but they're shorted when, when voltage is applied. And, and pin, and, and the yellow, and I'm sorry, the two blue wires, the yellow is the uh, ground, I think, and the gray is the uh, VCC. These two blue pins are, are the, the number two uh, relay in this chip, and they, they short here. So when the door is open, these, this, this contact is open, and this contact is open. When the door is closed, it closes these. And I measured the voltage, and it's, it's plus five. Um, <clears throat> because, of, uh, you know, that's, that's what's coming from one of the pins or whatever. So, I, uh, you know, this is a mod, so we're going to check it first. We're going to check it for voltage first. Okay. So, zero volts here. And then let's, let's look at the VCC supply to this uh, dual relay. They got nothing. And then let's also check continuity here, because we know that the red and the black are supposed to have a short when the power is applied, and the two blues are supposed to have a short. So now we're on and we've got nothing there and nothing. Wait a minute. The drive motor just came on. That's interesting. But we're not shorted, so we're going to close the lid. And I see the disk access light is coming on, and we saw this move just a little. And we're going to test voltage on our supplies. So with the lid closed, we now have 4.8, almost 4.9 volts here. And 4.9 on the supply to the dual relay. And this is ground, so this is not going to come up as anything. All right. <clears throat> and now we're going to test continuity on the pins here. And this one is a dead short. And this one is not a dead short. And it also turns the motor on. OK, so I think we've proven that this dual relay, one side of this dual relay is actually busted. It's not, actually we should probably do it right from the pins <clears throat> of the unit. There is actually a resistor here that I'm bypassing when I short that, so um, that's probably not too good of an idea. Okay, yeah, now the motor's spinning slower. Um, that resistor, when I tested in circuit, is coming up as a 1.5K. So we definitely don't want to do what I just did and short those two pins together. Uh, so there was a 1.5K resistor on the board here. And for some reason, somebody did this mod because they didn't, they wanted at least the motor portion to not spin when the lid is up. Because apparently it was. I mean, you're, you'd expect the disc to stop spinning when you lift the lid. And that's basically what this circuit is going to do. I don't know what this other part is cutting off. Maybe maybe the circuit for the uh, the tracking or, the, I mean, the seeking of the, the laser or whatever. But we did find a problem here. So what are we going to do? I guess we will temporarily jump the, um, the signal for the motor. And uh, we'll see if we have a working CD32 because 
because my my multimeter in diode mode is actually creating enough enough of, of a uh, a jump to, to get the drive to spin up on its diode test so yeah let's 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 jump those two pins and see what happens all right so I don't know if you can see that but I basically took a little piece of wire and, and jumped those two connections together so that would be um, these two it just seems to be making the um, the drive spin all the time which is fine for testing purposes so now this thing is functionally going to work as though the lid was closed and we're going to go ahead and turn this back on I want to see if we get any spin out of this thing I'm actually going to end this video now. This is very unusual because a vast majority of my videos end with a complete repair. But allow me to explain. It turns out this drive unit is actually unfixable because the tracking gear is stripped. The spindle motor seems to work after all, but I believe the laser unit is faulty. I found all this out from observing a working unit's correct operation. So let's just watch what the laser normally does with the lid closed and no disc in there. It's going to need to zero itself because it's pushed this way a little bit. There it goes. And it pops up. See how it pops up? The other laser wasn't doing that. If it detects a disc, it will start the spindle motor spinning. However, if there is no disc, the spindle motor does not spin. Therefore, you cannot test the motor without a disc in place. In the end, this unit is not fixable because of a bad gear, but I'm going to keep it for parts. In the meantime, I've received another drive unit that has a different issue. And my thinking is, different drive unit, different issue, different video. The main purpose of this video is to show the mod that I found, let you know what it does and how to test it.